guys, it's Queen DJ, and in today's video, I will be reacting to episode 22 of No Guns Life. So let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. I still want to know where the heck this dude has been. I mean, like, oh my god. Like, has Colonel been in hiding or something? I mean, mm, you could have at least said something, but no. I have questions. I wish it was last week I had questions and maybe we'll possibly get like backstory on these two and the relationship between them because of course they had to work together. But are we gonna get that? Probably not. Like knowing this show with some kids like I feel like this show we got what two more episodes of this show before we're done? Yeah, because we're in the the final stretch. <laughs> this show, I know it in my heart. It's going to end with a, so many unanswered questions. Mm. And as much as I would like for this show to get a second two, uh, season two, I don't think it's going to happen. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'll say what I said, I think, when we were at like the halfway point of this show. Um, the hype for it was good because there were like, Five or six of us watching this show and doing the action match adjustment to it as well. But at the same time, it wasn't, it was being talked about, but not as much as like whatever else came out around the time the first season that the first half of the show was airing because everybody was talking about that. This second half of the show isn't being talked about as much as a lot of people. So I think that would be the reason why I don't think it'll get a second season. I don't know. I mean, I really want it because it's, it's a really good underrated show and I enjoy it. And I know that there's a lot of other people who do it well. Because he only has, like, three left. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, <laughs> Juzo, Seven, they going at it right now. Speaking of which. And then you know what? No. Victor. What about Victor? You would think Victor would pop up like somewhere. I mean. But still, no. He's in hiding. And I don't think he'll ever come.
playing yesterday. Seven is way too freaking powerful. I mean, I don't know if I'll be able to do keep up, but like, you know. baby boy, girl, you're just jealous. And see, I figure if Mary and Chris goes, maybe Victor might show up for Mary because he still loves her no matter what. But, I mean, who knows? I mean, it's his life or his family. I mean, but mm, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Because you're not just a feeling, you have feelings and emotions just like everyone else. You know, honestly, I thought he was going to You have seven. I mean, you just go.
have no choice of. Yeah, but. Of course, that's what you're gonna be like. To tell the rest of them here. Something also tells me that Jesus' partner also knew him when he was human and before, you know, he was chosen to be a gunslinger human. Maybe. But because of the fact that Juzo doesn't really remember anything from his human life, we'll never get that answer as well. That's all you knew. You heard soul slash soldier first, and then someone with human emotions second.
Me conheci mais ainda. She's gonna kill you and let you live. So basically, it's safe haven. Hmm. Thought you would have straight up killed him. This has got to be his human sign coming out. Because why would he say that? Still, I got a bad feeling something's gonna happen. Exactly. The side will keep dying. We'll die together. Yeah. Eventually it will be the future and you'll be accepted. He just wanted all of them there, all together. Because in the end, like, wasn't Juzel the only one? Ugh. this has to be the moment where she's just like I don't want to be a tool anymore instead of doing her shot
That's it. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah! I have to say, his like, he, his PTSD is very, very freaking similar to Kimiko from SAO. I mean, not 100%. But some of the similarities, like, oh, they're there. They're there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just realizing that he could do anything up until that point where he was like, you know what? I need to live for myself. I need to make my own decisions instead of uh, instead of letting someone do it for, my, for myself and stuff. But, oh. We all knew that that was going to come back to him eventually. I mean, you know, that's like... <sighs> I don't like to compare this, but I, I've seen it done in anime and video games and some movies when they have like a trilogy or whatever, when someone makes their first kill, like in the last, in the pre, in the previous show that I just finished watching, freaking uh, Millionaire Detective, Haru killed a woman and didn't even realize that she had a toy gun until he looked. So he was very traumatized by that and he wasn't able to use a gun even up until episode 9 that we're on officially for today, and I don't know if we'll be able to shoot again. It's like that. I mean, you have the blood on... Not even blood! Oil! The oil on every single person that you killed, whether, you know, your partner shot the trigger or someone else shot the trigger. You were the one who killed them, so no matter what, their blood or oil or whatever is on his hands. But to the fact is that, you know, I'm about to, yeah, Tetsuro. Out of all the people, Tetsuro was the one who's able to look into his past and to see everything. Not his human side, because, you know, as he said, he doesn't have any memories of what he was as a human. So he could have been maybe the nicest person ever. Just like, um, freaking What's-His-Face, who was friends with Five in his situation. There's so many unanswered questions that with their human side, we'll never really get that context for. And I, like, honestly, I just like that so much because, you know, you just want to know, like, what they were like before all this happened to him. I mean, specifically, like, going back to the dude who was friends with Five, we got, like, a little context because of his wife, but not, like, to a point where I feel like I know everything about him, and that's kind of the same thing of how I feel about Juzo, but, like, if we're talking about him as a gunslave unit, I feel like officially with this episode, I know a little bit more about him than I did when I first started this show. But, like, I just... <laughs> you would think that someone who is as hard and... kind at times, because he has moments <laughs> where he's just a stupid, adorable baby boy... You wouldn't think he would have a dark past like this, but I think almost every gunslave unit who has been a part of this has this tragic past because they were killing people, and yes, they knew it, but they couldn't stop it themselves until, you know, once they figured out, hey, this is wrong and I need to do something about it. I mean, this episode probably maybe had to be the darkest episode ever. I mean, that and then, like, a little bit of Tetsuro's past because, like, any anything on his like and learning the truth on that that ish was dark, um, but oh, they didn't really go into detail about um, Crone and dude's past because you know he left when the freaking uh, walls the ceiling was coming down on them so of course he got away and with two episodes left, two episodes left I I don't know. I don't know how they're going to end this. And it, it's just like, uh, th this is kind of how I feel about Millionaire Detective because both of these episodes for this week, for these two shows, both ended on cliffhangers. Like, still giving us a really good episode, but then you end because there's like, okay, hey, ends abruptly. All those questions you have, mm, you got to wait till next week to get an answered. But still, I mean, mm, I, I love it, but then I also hate it because I'm like, I, I want those questions answered now because... I don't want to have to, I don't want to wait a week to sit on this, and then we come to next Thursday, and then I forget any other questions that I had, and then I'm like, oh, okay, 
that kind of makes sense about what I was asking about last week and shit, but, like, I get it, it, it happens, but, like, I don't know. I mean, the only one who can get him out of this rut now is Tetsuro. He's there with him, and there are points to, there are points where I felt like Tetsuro, even though also Juzo's former partner, was slowly bringing out his human side and the way he is now. Tetsuro is also there to bring more of his human side and his emotions out as well because, I mean, Juzo is a completely different person from episode one, even up to this episode. Really, let's just say, not even episode one, from the start of the second half of this series to the end, he's a completely different person from what we've met from the start of this. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about this episode. It was good. Very emotional, tragic backstory, but yeah. Other than that, guys, that was my reaction view towards episode 22 of No Guns Life. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys officially all next Thursday for episode 23. Bye, guys.